so today we will be talking about gear what is gear let's see we have uh, any power producing machine uh, placed at some position but we do not want force or motion or power at that position we want uh, at somewhere else so for that we use uh, a different mechanism to transfer that uh, motion or that uh, power that energy and gear is one of those mechanisms gear is used to transfer motion or energy from one shaft to another shaft uh, let's see we have uh, these two shafts upon which uh, there are uh, gears that are mounted this shaft is rotating in this direction and because of the gear mechanism this shaft would rotate in this direction because of the motion of this shaft so another important thing is that uh, it can change the direction of the motion for example if you see over here this is clockwise rotation but this is anti-clockwise rotation so uh, the clockwise rotation of this shaft uh, is converted into anti-clockwise rotation of this shaft and similarly we can also convert anti-clockwise uh, rotation of one shaft into clockwise rotation of other shaft then we have types of gears uh, following our its types per gear helical gear bevel gear worm gear rack and pinion uh, this is the diagram of uh, those uh, gears we have front view and top view of the gears so what is spur gear spur gear is type of gear where the power is transferred from one shaft to another such that they are parallel and the teeth are also parallel to the shaft axis so we can see over here this is shaft one and this is second shaft and the teeth are represented by the straight lines on the top view this is the top view you can see the lines on the top view on the gears so if you see these lines are also parallel to the shaft axis so both conditions are satisfied shafts are parallel and the teeth are parallel to the shaft axis so this is spur gear since there is line contact so it is a little bit noisy uh, if we do not want noise then we can use helical gears so what are helical gears helical gears a type of gear in which the first condition is just like a spur gear means there would be parallel shaft but the teeth are not parallel to the shaft axis if you see over here this is the top view where this is the shaft and its axis this is the axis and of another shaft so these are parallel uh, but if you look over to the teeth teeth are represented by the lines which are at an angle to the shaft axis you can see it over here so second condition is also satisfied that is the teeth would be at certain angle to the shaft axis this is helical gear since there is not line contact and start and start it is point contact but gradually the contact increases towards line contact so there would be no noise means less noise as compared to spur gear one thing that would uh, i discuss and force analysis too but uh, i want uh, just to introduce it to that if, if you divide the force into its component that is uh, exerted by one gear on another gear uh, so in case of spur gear there would be two components radial and tangential we want tangential component but we do not want radial component so there is one component that we do not want but in case of helical gears there are total three components uh, tangential axial and radial we want tangential component but we do not want the other two so in case of spur gear there is only one uh, force component that we do not want but in case of helical gear they are two in number so uh, in a way spur gear is all, has also its own importance what is bevel gear uh, spur gear uh, and the helical gear uh, the transfer of the uh, power was between two shafts that were parallel but sometimes we do not want transfer of power between parallel shaft we, we may want it to transfer the motion between perpendicular or at certain angle so we would use bevel gear for it the bevel gear is a type of gear where the shaft axis are intersecting so there is only one condition that is the shaft axis should intersect if you see over here this is the shaft axis of one gear this is the shaft axis of another gear and they intersect over here so that condition is satisfied so this is a bevel gear the teeth could be parallel to the shaft axis and it could not be parallel to the shaft axis what is worm gear a worm gear is a type of gear where the shaft axis could be at any angle but here uh, the important thing is that the, sh the two shaft axis would never intersect with each other if you see over here this is the shaft axis of worm and this is the shaft axis of the gear which is in and out uh, of the page so it would never intersect with each other 
Now let's talk about the nomenclature of the gear. We have uh, teeth over here. The top portion of the teeth is called top land. This is the top land. This is the top land of another uh, teeth. Now the bottom land, the bottom area of the teeth is called bottom land. This is the bottom land. This is the bottom land. Okay, since uh, here is actually a flank or a wheel upon which teeth are mounted. So if we look at and uh, from from front means if we uh, see its front view, it would uh, looks like a circle for us. So uh, there are some circles and gears uh, that should be mentioned. The circle that passes through the top land is called uh, a random circle, and the circle that passes through the bottom land is called a random circle. The distance okay. Now we have another circle that is very important, and uh, the that is. Uh, Pitch circle. What is pitch circle? All of the calculations are based on pitch circle uh, for the gear. It is in a way a theoretical or imaginary circle. The distance between the pitch circle and addendum circle is called addendum, and distance between pitch circle and addendum is called addendum. And they are uh, shown over here. This is addendum, and this is addendum. Now, what is tooth thickness? Since we, if we look over here. Uh, to the teeth the tooth thickness is varying so if we take the tooth thickness on the pitch then that is called tooth thickness it is the distance from here uh, up to here the thickness that is measured on pitch circle is called tooth thickness and if you see over here uh, the distance from this point this ending point to the starting point uh, of uh, another on pitch circle that is called width of space we can see over here this is the space there is no material so the width of that uh, space on pitch circle is called width of space now if you look over to this area the area above this pitch circle is called face and the below area uh, is called flank now let's talk about clearance uh, if you mesh another gear with the this gear and if there is a space between the bottom land of this gear and the top land of another meshing gear if there is a space that space is called clearance and uh, the circle is called clearance circle if we draw a circle for it then uh, the circle is called uh, clearance circle now this area is fillet and this is uh, here we have fillet radius this is the fillet radius and uh, we do it uh, just because we do not want interference so that is why we have fillet that area another thing that we should discuss is uh, the backlash backlash is actually if there is uh, um, there is some space between the face and flank of one gear and face and flank of the machine gear if there is distance uh, that is called backlash that is unwanted and uh, that would produce noise and it would produce wear and tear now let's talk about uh, tooth size let we have a uh, gear uh, that has four teeth on it uh, that is uh, considered just for the purpose of simplicity uh, means there can be any number of teeth on the gear but here we have considered four teeth uh, so you can see that uh, if there are four teeth then there would be four pitches uh, as we know that pitch is equal to uh, the um, tooth thickness plus uh, width of space so if there is one teeth then there would be one pitch if two teeth then there would be two uh, pitches and if there is n number of uh, uh, teeth then there would be n number of uh, circular pitches now one thing that sh you should remember that it is represented by lowercase p uh, so uh, if we sum up the uh, n number of pitches then it would give us the uh, circumference of that circle so pi d is the circumference of the circle that is equal to the sum of the uh, number of pitches which is NP if uh, there are a number of teeth uh, then uh, we have uh, divided N on both sides that would give us P equals to pi D by N 
now uh, what is uh, d by n uh, d by n is actually the module that is the diametral pitch of the circle divided by the number of teeth so p is equal to pi m uh, now now and the next formula we have uh, uh, replaced m by 1 over p but that p is uppercase p uh, capital letter p uh, what is that that is actually uh, diametral pitch the lower case p is actually circular pitch and the upper case p is diametral pitch and diametral pitch is the reciprocal of uh, the module or p is equal to n divided by d number of uh, teeth on the gear divided by its diameter so lower case p is equal to pi by upper case p now if we multiply that uh, upper case p on both sides we would get p into p equals to pi so this is another important equation for us then we have a standardized tooth system for spare gear if we have v1 full depth uh, teeth uh, then the angle for it can be between 20 up to 25 uh, depending upon the angle we would have to decide the addendum and dedendum and so the table is uh, given we should uh, form the teeth according to the table means addendum should be uh, the value that is given in the table for example for 20 angle it is 1 m means one module so module would be given multiply it with the one uh, we should get the uh, addendum value similarly dedendum value is 1.25 so this is the way uh, we can make the teeth of the gear and for stub teeth which is not full teeth the angle should be 20 and the module addendum and addendum values are again we have used 14.5 degree angle earlier but nowadays we are using uh, angle between 20 up to 25 and this is the value of the face width what should be 3p or 5p is the diametral pitch and if you represent it in, in the form of a circular pitch then it should be like this this equation hold should hold for the face 